Final match of the SMU Double Tree Classic for the championship. Before this one got started, we had Milwaukee and Weber State playing for third place, and the Panthers earned that. Olivia Toland getting things started for the visitors. That's something that is going to be so crucial for LMU today is blocking at this SMU offense. They have so many weapons on their side, and if they can just stop a couple of them, it would be very key to pulling out a win. Mia Schaefer. In her second season with the Lions, another former San Jose State Spartan Mustangs tied at one. Celia Cullen is doing a great job early, already dishing the ball to different players to see who has that hot hand early in the set. Natalie Foster, first kill of the day for SMU, and she's back at the service line. Had five kills yesterday against Weber State on nine attacks and starts with an ace. What do we say? Ace machine. Ace, ace in your face. This is something that is not uncommon for Natalie Foster. 15 on the season. And this is only match six. Another 16 aces on the year for Foster. She is a serve receiver's worst nightmare. I would not want to see her behind that service line if I were them. The transfer from Wichita State, making it a three to one SMU lead. All three points thanks to her. This time into the net. They say high risk, high reward, and that's something that Natalie Foster takes to heart. She is such a great server, but sometimes you do just err a little higher if you do have a faster serve. Three to two SMU and Sophia Myers to serve. A preseason all West Coast Conference selection. Maya Tabron with her first swing. James Wheeler keeps it alive. Bolton to Tabron. Tabron's fed again right at Paige Flickinger for the point. That leads us in to the keys to the match. Drive us home on this, Alex. Yes, SMU is definitely going to have to get their block ready because LMU runs a fast offense. So they need to be disciplined on the block so they don't get used and tooled. On the other hand, LMU is going to have to run it fast to try to get those blockers off guard so that they can have a chance to get the ball down and get plenty of kills tonight. Light touch from Flickinger. Flicking. Former LSU Tiger getting the job done. Yes, and at LSU, she played beach and also court volleyball, so she has a different skill set than a lot of court players do. She just sees the court with a different eye. Played her high school ball at Byron Nelson in nearby Trophy Club, Texas. Ace nearly there, and it goes down. SMU thought they might have the pancake, couldn't keep it off the floor. I'm sure Lawson is happy to get that one because as a middle, sometimes you just don't want to play that defense. So getting an ace is the easy way out, and she did just that. Bolden hitting it over to Shimei, who could not keep it alive. This time, Bolton with solid service receive. Free ball for the Ponies. Bolton to Cullen. First kill of the day for Navy Okamore. The grad transfer from Florida. Looked like a miss hit from Nady Okamore, but hey, a point is a point, and get it how you can get it. Now Tabron, grad transfer from Colorado. Tied for the team lead with 10 kills yesterday against Milwaukee. Overpass, Okafor can't put it to the floor. Another chance for SMU, it's Jams Wheeler. This time to the right, Nia Shemay going cross court. Her first kill. One thing that head coach Trent Kirsten said before the game is that they are going to have to watch out for Nia Shemay because she is such a dynamic hitter. They cannot try to out physical her. Right. Six to four SMU. Tabron puts it in play. Quick set to Evans. They call Nady Okamore queen at the net for a reason. She is extremely dominant at the front line. The overhead look as Okamore goes up. All with her left hand. 
Shemay gets credit for the block assists to her right. Another ace for the Ponies, Tabron. In the offseason, head coach Sam Erger emphasizes serving and how crucial it is to win games. And you can tell how big this is for the SMU Mustangs this season. Three already. Two from Foster, now one from Tabron. A four-point Mustang lead. Olivia Tolan ends a 4-0 Mustang run. Tolan had to wait for that hit a little bit. The set was high, and she had to use her vertical to just emphasize that swing. Delfina Shu will head back to the service line. Freshman from Argentina. It's been very rare in Trent Kirsten's coaching career to use this many young players on a consistent basis. But he has some... Solid freshman and sophomores. Maya Shemay on the attack for SMU. That's a solid graduate student. <laughs> Naya Shemay is so athletic. It's hard to block her. She is high on the kill, and also she has a powerful arm to go along with it. Ellie Bolton came to SMU from Creighton. Been in the libero jersey all weekend long. James Wheeler at the net. James Wheeler really took control of that net. The middle was a little bit late again because that LMU defense, the LMU offense is so fast. So she had to make sure that she really penetrated the net because she was a solo blocker. 10-5, SMU. Bolton, wide of the line. Second SM service error for the Ponies. SMU came out last night with, I believe, 11 service errors. So I'm hoping to see them clean it up today. Here's Paige Flickinger. Coach Kirsten said she's finding joy in playing the game again now at LMU. I think Foster's having some fun, too. Celia Cullen is doing a great job of getting these middles involved early in this set. That makes the blockers on the other side make sure that they're not cheating to the pins. Four assists already for Cullen. Here's Brooke Frazier. Second year at SMU coming over from Texas A&M. Sophia Myers. Thought she had the point. And it does, in fact, go to the Lions. A brief discussion there between our officials. She got that last-minute tool on the block. I believe the blockers were not penetrated and did not seal the net, so it hit the antenna, an automatic point for LMU. See it again there, SMU going up, attempting the block off the net and the antenna. Shemay from the back row with firepower. Shemay did not come to play. Hey, that kind of rhymes. She did not come to play today. She's extremely dominant in the front row, and she had been working for the back row attacks in the offseason, and it's really showing off today. Need a radar gun on that one. <laughs> Big time heat. 12 to 7 SMU. Natalie Perdue puts it in play. Her service run ends in a hurry as Sophia Myers goes back on the attack. Two kills to lead the Lions. That was a nice high swing for Myers. She went off the top of the hands. That's super hard for defenders, especially if they're sucked up ready for the tip. Mia Schaefer heading back to the line. She had a team leading 22 assists yesterday in LMU's win over Milwaukee. And on Thursday in the opener, as he registers the ace here, second of the afternoon for the Lions. You go back to the opener for Schaefer. Her first double-double of the season did that against Weber State. 24 assists and 12 digs. Cullen long pass to Tabron. LMU over. Free ball, Cullen to Foster. Couldn't take advantage. Myers flying in, pulls LMU within two. 
We are seeing a lot of tools on the block early in this set. SMU needs to be a little bit cleaner when it comes to their blocking right now to be able to penetrate, seal the net, and press over just so they don't get used. How about the defense saving that one for LMU? Kept alive and end up picking up the points. Foster able to get it in on the line cross court. That's extremely clutch at Foster. That is a high level play because it is hard to hit a slide, especially when it's not the perfect set and it's a little bit off the net. So props to her. And a short 3 0 run for the Lions. Foster. Has two aces on the day. That's her first, rather second service error. Had one after those two aces on her original time through the rotation at the service line. Lines within two. Long back-to-back -back errors from these teams. Over the weekend, both teams have had just a few too many service errors. will certainly be a point of emphasis as both teams return to practice early next week. Tabron to Cullen and on to Shemay. LMU able to keep it alive. Flickinger at the net met by Okamore and Shemay. It seems like it is a battle of the LMU outside versus Shemay on the right side. Flickinger is trying to mix up her shots by giving roll shots. Swinging hard, but Shemay has the answer on this one with the block with Okamore. Mustangs are first to 15 championship match of the Doubletree Classic. This is the ACC. Nebraska Thursday against Milwaukee. Then Friday against Weber State looking to close out the Doubletree Classic with a win against Loyola Marymount. Lines are perfect so far. In Dallas, beating Weber on Thursday and Milwaukee on Friday. Off fingers and a point for the Mustangs. There, Maya Tabron goes again. Just being a consistent force for SMU, it's not always the hard hitting kills that'll get them the point, but she'll look for hands. Five point SMU lead with Celia Cullen. Quiz set to Gianna Lawson. And here's Tabron able to tool the block off of Tolan. Again, another tool by Tabron. I think she saw that there was only one blocker up and she went ahead and attacked those hands because they were reaching a little bit outside the court. Timeout called by Loyola Marymount. Head coach Trent Kirsten. Second season for him leading this Lion program last year guided them to 20 wins. First 20 win campaign for LMU since 2018. And this is somebody who really knows how to build up a program, guided the Spartans into becoming a Mountain West contender at San Jose State. Spent three years there. Before that, spent quite a bit of time here in the Metroplex, Alex. Five seasons on the TCU staff. Unlike his four players that are from Texas, I'm sure he feels special right here being back in the DFW area coming from the Horned Frogs previously. Help the Frogs reach the postseason four times. Sam Erger, her third season as a head coach of SMU, last year won American Athletic Conference Coach of the Year honors as SMU went on a 15-match win streak with seven straight sweeps close out the regular season, an 18-1 record in the AAC, went on to the NCAA tournament, earned an opening round win over Texas State and then fell to a pretty good team. <laughs> at eventual national champion Texas Longhorn squad. I would say that they're pretty talented myself. Reached the round of 32. First time into the NCAA tournament since 2016. And now guiding the Mustangs into the premier volleyball conference in the country. The Atlantic Coast Conference. Put together a solid non-conference slate before meeting the ACC 
the Okamore Roofing Company is in business on Saturday. And I will say it time and time again, please do not overpass on the SMU Mustangs because it was an automatic point each time. 18-11. SMU over LMU. Tay Brown and Okamore were there. LMU unable to send it over before four touches. And that's one thing we used to call recycling. Sometimes when the ball is tight on the net, you just try to give your your team another chance to attack it again. So she tried to recycle that, but the team just couldn't return it. Big right arm of Flickinger, but it can't put it to the floor. Bolton was there, now Cohen and Tabron. A lot of firepower on display from both sides on that point. SMU registers the point. That is such a high level play from Tabron to hit it on the second tap. Tabron's up to four kills on eight swings. Cullen continues. This has been a seven to nothing SMU run thus far. Tabron makes it eight. She is being so persistent right now. She is adding defensively and offensively, both for SMU. And Okamore was right there to help her out if she needed it. Tabron gets credit for the solo kill, and SMU has a 10-point advantage. Here's a look around the ACC and the preseason expectations. Pittsburgh picked at the top, returning 10 players from a team that made a run to the semifinal round last year. Rest of the top five, new member Stanford, then Louisville, Georgia Tech, and Florida State. SMU right on the verge there at number six, but you certainly expect to see a lot of ACC teams into the NCAA tournament. As for the West Coast Conference, where Loyola Marymount resides, they're picked to finish third in that league. Pepperdine, who we saw here in Moody Coliseum last year, picked to win that league in back-to-back -back seasons. Odd to see Oregon State in that group to be sure, but Oregon State and Washington State playing as affiliate members in many sports in the West Coast Conference this year. You see both of them in the top six in the preseason rankings, the Beavers and the Cougars. Likely just a temporary arrangement for both of those teams. 21 to 11, returning out of the timeout. Ellie Bolton keeps it alive. Tabron again. LMU can't keep it off the floor. A 9 nothing run to make it an 11-point SMU lead. LMU is looking pretty scrappy right now. They tried to run that last one down, but aside from that, LSMU is getting great touches on the block, but they are not letting them get it down. They are recycling themselves. They are trying to swipe off of hands and get themselves another chance. Celia Collins spent plenty of time at the service line in this set. Finally comes to an end as Gianna Lawson tries to fire her team back up. Another high-level play from LMU. It is extremely hard to do a quick back set from the LMU setter. That was perfectly executed. Lawson making her third collegiate stop. Began at Portland, then on to San Jose State, and now at LMU. Top blocker on that Spartan roster last year. The overpass works out for the Mustangs. I want to say that's Ellie Bolton's second kill of the season. That is not something that you see from a libero very often. Into the campfire. Right in the middle. 23-12. Maya Tabron brings it in play. Light touch from Flickinger. 
Now Shimei into a couple of would-be blockers. Jams Wheeler with a light touch. Back to Flickinger. Shimei there again. Mustang point. I can see Flickinger trying out different shots here. She's trying to roll. She's trying to recycle. I think that ball was just a little too low and too fast for her to get a good swing on it. Set point for SMU. Toland can't put it down. Tabron, long pass to Wheeler. Closes out. Set one. SMU ends it on an 11 to 1 scoring run. Walking wounded, a lot of injuries on that team. It'll look much different in conference play. First point of set two goes to the Lions. And that is an uncharacteristic error on Maya Tabor. And I think she was looking for those high hands, but went just a little too high, resulting in an out ball. SMU hit 536 as a team in that opening set. Sam Erger pulling out the challenge card. We are going to see if she clipped those high hands on the way out. Oh, it seems as if they're challenging a net call, a net call, not a touch. Tracy Belton is the low official heading to the replay monitor. Liz Wilson's up top. Quick review and the call stands in favor of the Lions. Sophia Myers will put it in play. Last year at Montana, she was a first team all Big Sky selection. Stellar in service. Set a program record for aces. But she won't have another opportunity this time through. As I said earlier, Maya Chabron is just so consistent. And also, she knows if she is not finding success in one place, she can try something else. So before she went for high hands, this time she just powered through the block. Here's Cullen. The net nearly helped her out. Flickinger met by the SMU wall. Sophia Myers was ready for that cover ball. She just could not get her platform underneath it in enough time due to the dominance of both Nady Okamore and Nia Shimei. Six blocks for SMU already today. Off high hands. LMU evens it up at two. That SMU block is big, but that can be a disadvantage to getting big. You have a little bit more room to get a touch on the way up. Here's Lawson, grad student from Tucson, Arizona. Cullen to Shimei, to the left of Lawson. Nothing she could do. Every time Nia Shimei is on the outside, it seems like it's an automatic kill. I, too, as Celia Cullen does often, would set it in that one rotation that she plays on the out. Tabron. Big swing from Toland. Not enough. Wheeler's there. Long. Wheeler also looking for high hands as the ball was just a little bit off of the net. Delfina Shu. 
played on the Argentinian national team in the U19 ranks in 2022 and 23. Cohen to Chimay. Dug out by Shu. Flickinger. Every time Flickinger puts it down, we hear a really nice cheer in the building. Plenty of her family and friends in the house. Head coach earlier said that, you know, those Texas girls, they love their hometowns and they love playing at home. And you can really tell here. Into the nets. SMU able to keep it alive. Jams met by Lee Burrell. Burrell really did a great job of penetrating that net and committing to Jams Wheeler on that play because the middle didn't quite make it on that time. First time we've called her name today. The sophomore from Canada. Service error gives the Mustangs a point. SMU has just lost a little bit of their momentum as LMU went on a little run there. They're going to try to get it back right here with Ellie Bolton behind the service line. Bolton last year averaged 3.6 digs per set for Creighton. Also a Big East all academic choice. Cullen long past the jams on the line. Head coach Sam Erger always talks about if you do not have the best swing that you can, just try to take it deep into the corner, and that's exactly what Jams Wheeler just did. 5-5. Five, five. In set two. SMU won set one, 25-12. Quick set to Evans. Now Jams in the middle. That is extremely intelligent by Jams Wheeler. She knows that she just had an out of system set. She took it to the high deep corner. Now she's going to put it in the middle of the court. We call it to the heart. Some people call it the campfire donut. Middle of the court is so hard to defend. And she knew that the passers would probably be on their heels. Gives SMU a one point lead. Flickinger with the left hand. Jams again. Back to zone six. Jams is really mixing it up right now. We've seen a roll shot from her and two hard hits. The defenders are probably having a hard time trying to decipher what she's going to do next. LMU started strong, but now the Mustangs on a four to nothing run. Back to Flickinger. Her third kill. That was an inside set on the right side for Flickinger, and she saw that there was a split in the block. James Wheeler tried to penetrate the net and press over, but she couldn't quite make it there in time. After the attack, now back to the service line. For the grad student from Roanoke, Texas. Long. Teams are even now in service errors, three apiece. Look, Frazier returns. Myers and Cullen battling. Pushed over by Burrell, and SMU perseveres for the point. And that's one thing that I was hoping to see from Celia Cullen tonight. Last night, she didn't have very many kills, but she's such an athletic, active setter that I was expecting to see that tonight, and she did just that just now. Nifty move by Celia. Crafty. Short from Frazier. I could tell Frazier was trying to take a little power off there. Oh. 
Sam Hastings focused on her off the top of the broadcast, product of Centennial High School in Frisco nearby. She doesn't stay at the service line long as Nia Shamay keeps shining. Five kills on ten swings. I have so many words for Nia Shamay. Lethal, deadly, and just so effective from both the front row and the back row attack. Here's Purdue into the net. Natalie had her first two kills of the season yesterday against Weber State. Leads to Mia Schaefer. Nearly matched her season high from last year. 22 assists against Milwaukee yesterday. Had 23 against Gonzaga in 2023. Off the scoreboard and SMU can't send it over. Man, that scoreboard is definitely one disadvantage of being in Moody. Rare that it hits up there, and if it stays on your side, able to return. If it hits the scoreboard while you're sending it over, then point is dead. Natalie Foster nearly had that back line. No such luck. That was a great set by Celia Cullen. I think Natalie Foster tried to get on top of it and just barely missed the court, but honestly, not a bad swing by her. Mia Schaefer. Cullen trying to dump it over unsuccessful. Well, no, she got it. Pardon me. Again, Celia Cullen is one of those players. She's like, I can do it myself if y'all give me the opportunity. And I love that about her. An active setter, make sure that the blockers do not commit to any of their pins or even the middle. Long from Foster, point right back to the Lions. Tied at 11. Second set in the final match of the SMU Doubletree Classic. SMU and Loyola Marymount. Cullen to Tabron, a whistle. That was an extremely clean serve by Myers, and I think that SMU is having a difficult time trying to return that right now. Myers again. Cullen, back pass to Okamore. When Okamore gets the opportunity, she often puts it down. That was such a powerful swing and so hard to defend on the line because it is so fast on that side attack. Score tied at 12 is Celia Cullen. Puts it at Myers on the overpass, Tabron. SMU does not shy away from getting happy birthdays. Trent Kirsten has a huge smile on his face on the Loyola side. It's like nothing, nothing we can do <laughs> about that one. No feedback for that one. Honestly, on to the next point. Okay, move along. One point SMU lead. Make it two. Low on the attack from LMU. Cullen almost cleared the tape with that one. If it would have gone over, it definitely would have been an extremely sharp hit that would have been super difficult to defend. 14 12 ponies. Cullen long on service, ending a 3 0 run. Seventh service error of the day for SMU. LMU has three of them. As great as this week has been, 
for SMU. It can never be perfect. And as you mentioned, service accuracy is going to be a point of conversation this coming week. For sure. I think it's going to be at the top of the list for things to work on in practice. SMU 15 to 13 in set two. They have a one set to nothing advantage over LMU. We want it all. We want all. Sam Hastings from Frisco, Texas, to the right of your screen. Played her high school ball at Centennial. And Nadie Okamore, she's from Hebron High School in Carrollton. So much great high school volleyball and club volleyball in Dallas Fort Worth. There is a big reason why Sam Erger thinks this program can reach national championship levels just simply by building on what's here in the Metroplex. LMU tapping into that talent too. Trent Kirsten coached at TCU for four years, so he knows a, a thing or two about what happens in this area. Dipped into the Metroplex to find some players. Naya Shemay, she's from Casper, Wyoming. Yes, Naya Shemay is a force to be reckoned with, definitely playing outside of herself, especially this season. Every time I've watched her play, she's gotten better and better and better. And here's Ellie Bolton, former Creighton Blue Jay. Foster at the net, can't put it back over. And that was a middle versus a middle duel. Caitlin Evans had a great swing there. She saw only one blocker. She knew that she had to either swing to the right or swing to the left, and she went to go towards that libero and caught hands on the way. First kill for Evans. She calls Dallas home, spent most of her childhood here, teaming up alongside Burrell to send it back. That set was inside for Jams Wheeler, so honestly it makes it a little bit easier on the middle blocker to close that. Another local product and Paige Flickinger at the service line. Just long. LMU only has half of the service errors that SMU does. I'm, ha I'm hoping to see both of them clean it up behind the service line. Eight for the Mustangs, four for the Lions. And SMU's lead now, one point. Long pass to Myers. Wheeler can't dig it out. After that timeout, I'm thinking they talked about finding different ways to score. You can see them finding hands in the front row and just trying to use the blockers instead of trying to power through them. 17-17. Short service SMU able to keep it alive. the middle that is something that we're taught is so hard to defend growing up at that deep corner shot because of course a libero is going to be up ready for you to pound it down the line and if you go right over their head especially if it's a smaller defender it's really hard to touch fourth kill for Natalie Foster Myers long on the attack and the card will come out from Trent Kirsten, challenging that it hit hands. Challenging the touch. Appreciate that. New technology we have at the scorers table where Tracy Belton can let us know exactly what's happening on the official review. Keep in mind what we see on the broadcast. That's not the only thing that the officials can see. There are additional high speed cameras permanently in place here in Moody Coliseum that give the officials additional looks. 
Call is overturned. Thank you, Miss Belton. Point to the Lions. That's such a crucial point for the Lions. Trying to gain some momentum right here and tie it up. Reverts the score to 18 to 18. Twenty-five to twelve was the count in set one in favor of the Mustangs. A very different second set. It seems as if when LMU went into their timeouts and went into that middle of the time between the sets that they talked about some changes that were going to be made and they're really implementing those to make this a tighter set. Mia Schaefer re-enters. And heads to the service line. One of three preseason all West Coast Conference selections on this Lions roster. Cullen tries to dump it over. Myers dug out by Bolton. Pass to Tabron. Long on the attack. Again, I think during the timeouts, the coach must have said something about trying out different shots because you can see them really looking for the hands from the blockers to go off of. One point Mustang lead. Foster. Cohen and Okamore able to get the job done at the net. That was such a fast set because the setter was already on the left side because of the pass. Props to Celia Colin and Nady Okamore for getting there in time and pressing their hands over the net. LMU needs a timeout. Trailing by two. A rare challenge issue to this Mustang team this weekend. Well, Nady Okamore, Coach Erger calls her next level legit, a true M1, and she has been shining this week. They call her queen at the net for a reason. She can block, she can hit. At her previous score, Florida, she had, she was known for blocking, but when she's come here, she has really been implemented into the offense and has been getting, has been able to get those key kills in crucial moments. You saw there, second best in the Southeastern Conference. And now getting set to run through the Atlantic Coast Conference this season. Sitting next to a fellow transfer in Maya Tabron, who played last year in the Pac-12 for Colorado. I love how composed this veteran SMU team looks right now. Lions are making things difficult in this second set. SMU certainly ran into some difficulty on Tuesday. Down five in that first set against Nebraska. Turned things around in a big way. Went on to sweep the Huskers. This time find themselves leading by two. Make it three. Your ace machine. Ace machine is a perfect name for her. I think SMU should feel very confident when they have her behind the service line because they know that when she puts it in, it's going to be a tough serve. Three aces for Foster on the day. 17 on the season. LMU able to end a 3-0 Mustang run. Sophia Myers puts it to the floor. Sophia Myers has been very, very persistent right here. You can see she saw the hands, but she decided to really attack that split. Talk about somebody who knows how to put an ace through. Number one in the Big Sky Conference last year, averaging .47 aces per set. That's top 30 nationally. Flickinger down the line, a diving Shimei. Can't keep it up. And I think that's one of those high-level things that you see in Paige Flickinger being that beach player. She has a couple of different tools in her toolbox 
That high line shot across her body is extremely elite. 17 double doubles for Myers last year. She continues at the line. Okamore with heat. There is a reason we call her queen at the net, whether it is blocking or attacking. She gets the job done for SMU time after time. 22 to 20. Mustangs in set two. Cullen at Myers. Quit set for Lawson. Chance for Tabron in the far corner. SMU seems to be coming with the heat on these last few attacks. Tabron has an absolute explosive arm on her in that last attack. You mentioned it, Alex, composed, understanding the situation, and they have had a great stanza here. LMU needs another timeout. For sure. I think that's the biggest difference between having a veteran team who has experience, especially when you bring a couple of girls in from different teams. The Atlantic Coast Conference looks very as far as a message to the ACC after that Tuesday win over Nebraska, Coach Erger didn't want to send one. She just wants the league to be proud of that victory. Doesn't want to put anyone on notice. No reason to give them bulletin board material. <laughs> I'm extremely excited, especially after Tuesday's match, to see what the SMU Mustangs can do with this new conference realignment. And especially for the atmosphere, to bring that here in Dallas and to bring some of those fans back is going to be extremely exciting. Another big non-conference tournament coming here next weekend. Kentucky, Purdue, Houston. The conference play only 20 days away for the Mustangs. They'll start September 27th at 19th ranked Georgia Tech. Nice Shamay. Lawson was there, but it goes out of bounds. Set point. Nasha May did not have a lot of time to transition on that ball because of the short tip from Paige Flickinger, but she got a great attack on it and was able to find those hands on the way out. Sound the siren for set point. Wheeler with the dig. Bolton. And Tabron puts down the set winner. LMU made things very interesting. Simply the student athletes going back to the locker room. So maybe something the captains decided needed to happen. Definitely could have been player led. Natalie Foster on the attack. Here's Myers for the first point of the third set. Tooling the block is something that's going to be very key for LMU. And I think they kind of caught on between the last two sets that they cannot power through the monstrous SMU block. They're going to have to either go around it or use hands. LMU trying to hand SMU its first set loss of the week. Three sweeps so far. Tabron couldn't put it down. Staying it over. Wild point so far. Tabron didn't quite end it. LMU keeps it alive. Bolton to Cullen to Tabron. Big diving stop for Hastings, but ultimately the Lions can't keep it off the floor. Tied at one. I want to give my props to Hastings in that last play. She was extremely versatile picking up kills, and that was a great tip, but she just couldn't get it high enough and call three names to let the next person know who was supposed to get it. Challenging the ball was down. Challenge coming from Coach Kirsten on the LMU side. His Lions team winning 20 games last year. As a student athlete, Coach Kirsten was a UCLA Bruin, started there as a walk-on, earned his way to a scholarship, ended up a three-year starter for the Bruins. Knows the Los Angeles area incredibly well, same for his knowledge of 
the Dallas Fort Worth area. Five seasons on the staff at TCU, where this relationship with Coach Erger really started coaching in the Big 12. Call is confirmed. Call stays on the SMU side. But Trent Kirsten was at TCU. Sam Erger was at Baylor. Trent Sorensen was at Kansas State. So all three coaches on the floor here know each other incredibly well in their time in that conference. And if you can say right now, maybe it's the battle of the Trents. Both of them standing about equidistant on the scores table right now. Trent Sorensen leaning on the bench on the SMU side. Tabron puts it off hands down the line. That was an incredible swing by Maya Tabron. She went thumbs down and just clipped the inside of that block. There you see Trent Sorensen walking back to the scorer's table. Long on the attack. On the serve, rather, for SMU. Tied at two. Here's Myers, a senior from Seattle. Shemay coming from the back row. Lawson keeps it alive. Cohen to Okamore. Myers is there. Tabron runs into the Lion Wall. That block was insane. Almost straight down. You can feel the energy here in the gym. Definitely a great block by the LMU Lions. 3-2 Lion lead. Cullen tried to dump it over. Tabron from Shimei again with the block for the Lions. Lawson's there alongside Toland. The Lions have come out of the timeout fire hot. They know that they're going to have to stop a couple of key players on SMU side to give them a chance to close this game up. A two point Lion lead. They give a point right back. SMU needs to stay clean behind this service line. They are at nine service errors right now. Here's Cullen. Quick set to Lawson. Cullen, long pass to Tabron, who goes down the line. Maya Tabron knows she's going to have to be crafty, crafty, especially after the two blocks that the LMU lines just had against her. She's got to go away from that block, and going down the line is the perfect way to do that. Tied at four. Hastings overpass. Shemay is there. I'll preach to the choir. Do not give SMU an overpass. They practice this every single day. The agile right hand of Shemay on the kill. She has eight. Down for the ace. And a smile and sigh of relief from Celia Cullen after they have nine service errors. She will add an ace, and that will make five. Cullen had an ace for the game-winning point on Thursday against Milwaukee. On the line. Paige Flickinger wiped off the outside hand of that right side to get that kill. That's something that's so elite, and honestly, if you can get that hand, there's no defender that can get that up. Flickinger now with five kills on 21 swings. She may have to send it over. Back set to Toland. 
We told you LMU brought a lot of fans here today, a lot of local products, and they're having some chances to get loud in this third set. They are definitely gaining some momentum, especially after the huge blocks in the last couple of plays, and now an unstoppable swing. Six to six. Tabron. Long. Lions regain the lead. It is getting loud in here. They are cheering on the sidelines, and they are happy to compete. Three consecutive points for LMU. Lawson, too strong. As one would say, too much time in the weight room. Maya Tabron will go to the service line. She leads SMU with 13 kills today. Also an ace, a block, and an assist. Nearly had ace two. They'll say that hit hands. The initial call is point to the Mustangs. Coach Kirsten doesn't think so. Caitlin Evans pleading her case. We'll see what you think. Look at how high Naya Shmay is. Evans waving her hand still. No, that did not touch me. <laughs> Coach Kirsten holding the challenge card in his hand and now uses it. Challenging a touch. I'll go to the monitor. An incredible week here at SMU. A win over Nebraska on Tuesday in straight sets. A pair of wins already here in the Classic, looking to close out a tournament championship against Loyola Marymount. Two days from now, the new national top 25 will be released. And the Mustangs should find themselves on that list. Tuesday, Coach Erger in her post-game press conference. The call is overturned. So point to LMU. No touch. Good challenge from Kirsten. Coach Erger thinks this team has earned a national top 25 ranking. Be shocked not to see it on Monday after what transpired here this week. They have been working hard all week, getting sweep after sweep after sweep. Definitely next week would be very key for them, going against many ranked opponents. Going to Baylor on Tuesday, looking to repeat their win over the Bears last season. At the time, that was SMU's highest ranked win in program history. LMU looking to make sure that SMU does not capture a fourth consecutive sweep. They're up by two in set three. And we see chest pumps going on between Leah Burrell and her whole team. They are hype and they are definitely taking the momentum away from SMU right now. Nine to seven. LMU on a With SMU football playing on Friday night. Good way to spend a Saturday afternoon on the hilltop. And sometimes that, that is the key in taking timeouts just to ice out that server and stop that run. Ellie Bolton. Back at the line, subbing in for Foster. Foster and Bolton checking in, excuse me. Some heat from Caitlin Evans, the American transfer. 
That is only Caitlin Evans' second swing of the game, but after that dominant swing, I would definitely continue to feed her. Here's Paige Flickinger. Former LSU Tiger, local product from Byron Nelson High School and Trophy Club. And Jams Wheeler puts it down. The senior from Austin. That was an out of system set, so that's an incredible swing on Jams Wheeler's side. Just going OTT, which is over the top of that block. Brooke Frazier. Pass to Myers. The Lions are roaring. Another dominant swing by Myers. I think she's really coming alive in this third set and has def definitely been one of their go-tos to get that easy kill. Sam Hastings from Frisco, Texas. Back close to home this weekend. Light whistle, SMU kept playing. Blocking error called on the Lions. Sometimes that's just what happens when you have the momentum, you wanna be aggressive on the block and you just get a little too tight to the net. And again, the challenge the card comes out. Trent Sorensen in the middle of this huddle with Sam Erger. We talked about the relationship between Erger, Sorensen, and Trent Kirsten on Loyola Marymount side, all three of them spending time as assistants in the Big 12 Conference. Now finding themselves guiding these two programs. Erger, the head coach, Sorensen, her associate, with SMU in their first season in the ACC. Trent Kirsten in his second season as the head coach at Loyola Marymount. Confirmed. Quick confirmation. You certainly saw some movement on the net there on the replay. And Natalie Perdue will head back to serve. Picked up her first two kills of the season yesterday against Weber State on five swings. Leah Burrell with her first kill on the day, the sophomore from Canada. Ellie Bolton was just sucked in the court a little bit too much. She really painted that line on that kill, so it was hard for her to go outside of herself. Mia Schaefer had her first double-double of the season against Weber State on Thursday. 24 assists, 12 digs. Myers going far corner, a little long. And again, LMU is going to keep trying to tool the block, get those deep shots. They know that they don't have a fair chance against this SMU block, so they're going to try different keys and different tools to get that kill. This is Natalie Foster. Three aces today. Ooh. Lawson bringing the heat. I'm speechless. That was an incredible dominant kill by Lawson. There was really nothing that you could do. The best that the SMU team could do was try to get a touch on that. Six kills for her yesterday against Milwaukee. Two in this one against SMU. Here's Flickinger. The left side for Tabron. 
Lawson, it's off her hands and out. That was a beautiful out of system set by Ellie Bolton. She got it high, she got it inside, and that gave Maya Tamron a great opportunity to really attack that ball. SMU down two with Celia Cullen at the line. Cullen dives for the save. Shamay. Flickinger, wide. That was a really tough shot for Flickinger. LMU's hitting percentage now down to 177 on the afternoon. And SMU is within one. <laughs> Okamore, Tabron, quick to the floor on the block. And that is a perfect demonstration on why the LMU Lions have been trying to go around that block and avoid it. Tied at 14. LMU regains the lead, ending a 3 0 run. And that makes SMU double digits and service errors. Again, I think this is something that they're really going to be honing in on in practice this week. Not much time before heading to Baylor on Tuesday. And a couple of days to work before Kentucky comes to town. They'll be here on Friday to face the Mustangs. Tied again, now at 15. Maya Tabron, transfer from Colorado. Two-time All-Pac-12 honorable mention. Three-time Pac-12 All-Academic. This is Caitlin Evans coming back home to Dallas. Caitlin Evans is finding so much success on her quick attack today. She has hit cutback and that sharp, and she's found hands. Gives her team a one-point lead. Delfina Shu, freshman from Argentina. Cullen to Wheeler. Okamore couldn't put it to the floor on the overpass. Call against LMU, point to the Mustangs. Sixteen all. Bolton short. When there have been bursts of momentum in this set, Alex, it's been from the Lions side. It's been tough for the Mustangs to sustain anything. Right. I think a lot of this has to do with the service errors. You can go on a huge run behind the service line and get a huge advantage, but they have not been able to get some momentum from that tonight. Myers met by Bolton. Now Wheeler with a light touch. Myers again off the hands of Foster. Myers has been extremely terminal in this set. She is finding huge success and just going off of the hands of the SMU Mustangs. Their broccoli is crumbling just a little bit and they can clean it up at the net. Team leader in kills. Myers has nine. Also has nine digs. Close to a double-double. To the left side for Wheeler. Myers over, problems on defense. A pair of Mustangs run into each other, and the Lions get a point. It seems as if the Lions have all the momentum right now, and SMU is going to take that timeout just to reset the whole team. 
Timeout called by Sam Erger. Loyola leading 19 to 16. LMU began its season dropping two out of three at Western Michigan's tournament. They come back with some solid returners and transfers on this team. Three players in all named the all West Coast Conference preseason squad. Sam Hastings is there, the local product from Frisco, Texas. She's a senior. Sophia Myers, a senior from Seattle, who is playing her first matches in the LMU uniform this season, came over from Montana. And Mia Schaefer, the senior from Carlsbad, California. This is her second season at LMU. Previously played for San Jose State. LMU began its year falling to Western Michigan, then a win over a Power Four conference team and a squad that's in SMU's conference. They beat Clemson in four, closed that tournament in Kalamazoo by getting swept by Loyola Chicago. Won the first two here in the Doubletree Classic in Dallas, beating Weber in four, Milwaukee in four. Three-point line lead out of the timeout. Paige Flickinger at the service line. Ending that Lion rally. Something that they probably talked about during the timeout is that mental and physical fatigue that both teams are feeling right now. They need to outlast that because this is the third game of the weekend. Third game of the weekend, fourth game of the week for SMU. From the back row, Tabron comes on strong. Pulls the Mustangs back within a point. Celia Cullen seems to really be mixing it up coming after this, out of this timeout, especially after LMU had so many key blocks in this past couple of points. Myers, They'll give it right back to her on the line. Myers back to back, and we talk about that willpower and aggressiveness. This is something that is working out extremely great for her in this third set, trying to take it away from SMU. Lions the first to 20 in set three. Cullen. And Shemay coming from the back row goes into the net. SMU just isn't playing as clean as they need to in these crucial moments, especially when LMU has made it to the red zone first. The red zone is the last five points of each set. I think the expectation for SMU today was another sweep, a fourth straight in this week. Maybe pressing a little bit here now in the third set. Down by three. Now down by four. LMU, that LMU offense just cannot be stopped right now. They're giving it everything they've got. We have yet to see many tips during this time. They are going to swing away to try to get that kill. And Sam Hastings with a chance to close out the third set close to home. Cullen to Wheeler. Hastings dives to make the stop. Back to Foster. Set up for Myers at the feet of Tabron. That is Myers' 11th kill of the game. She's hitting high over 500. Lions two points away from keeping SMU 
from registering its fourth straight sweep. Cohen to Wheeler. You see the team huddled up. Let's go, let's go. They're gonna try to chip away one at a time. It seemed as if Celia Cullen and James Wheeler really sped up this last set to try to beat that block. We've seen SMU down in a set just once at this late stage. It was against Nebraska on Tuesday, the first set. They were down five, 20 to 15. Came back and won, swept the Huskers. A chance to have a similar comeback against Loyola Marymount. But LMU just two points away from glory. Now that both teams are in the road zone, both of them are going to have to play extremely clean. Timeout called. SMU men's soccer coming up later tonight here on ACC Network Extra. It's the first match for the Ponies in ACC play. The Pittsburgh Panthers in town. SMU ranked number 22 in the country. Pitt is number eight. John Little, Steve Lansdale on the call. Eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central at Washburn Stadium. First time these two teams have got together. And just like we talked about with women's volleyball being the strongest conference in the country, same case can be made for men's soccer. ACC is loaded top to bottom. Look forward to hearing the call of John and Steve in prime time tonight on ACC Network Extra. Here's what's coming up for SMU Tuesday against the Baylor Bears down in Waco. You can find that one on ESPN Plus. And we're back here at Moody Coliseum for the SMU Doubletree Invitational. Kentucky the opponent on Friday. And I believe it's undetermined whether it'll be Purdue or Houston on Saturday, a true tournament format. In that event, Purdue and Houston playing the other opening round game. Winners plays winners, plays winners. Losers play losers on Saturday. Yeah. Natalie Purdue into the net. It is set point. LMU definitely has the momentum in this gym right now. Mia Schaefer. Set point for Loyola Marymount. Just taking one set from SMU would feel like a huge victory. Can't do it. SMU stays alive, but they do trail by three. And if there was anyone for SMU's team behind the service line that I would want in this moment, it would be Natalie Foster. Foster three aces on the day. But into the net, an error to close in. Set four underway. Natalie Foster on service and the Mustangs get the first point. Again, that is such a hard read for the blockers, especially having a quick set go back. That is a great job on the SMU Mustangs for following that with their eyes and pressing over quick. Foster goes long. And now SMU has doubled the LMU team for service errors with 14. Here's Myers. Golden up to Tabron. Reset again to Tabron. Big swing from Flickinger. 
SMU able to send it over. <laughs> Olivia Tolan delivers her fourth kill. In the third set, we saw the LMU team giving a couple of more tips, rolls, trying to tool, but right now it seems like they are aggressive with the swing and just trying to literally power away. I haven't talked enough about Toland's day. We have mentioned Myers a lot. 11 kills and now an ace. Three to one as the Lions try to force a fifth set. Okamore unsuccessful. Flickinger off Shemay and down. Flickinger's up to seven kills on 27 swings. She is already having herself a set. She powered through that block right through the split and was able to get that kill. Four to one, Lion Lee. From the back row, Shamay wide. The LMU team definitely has a momentum right now. They're trying to maintain their composure by also bringing the energy on and off the court. You wouldn't know this is the team down two to one. This looks like a confident bunch to our right. Tabron tries again. Right back to her. Now they go to the right side. Lengthy rally ended by Tabron. Her 18th kill. Though Tabron did get that kill, I think SMU needs to do a little bit better of job of bettering the ball. You can see that they had a lot of nasty touches in that last play. After SMU took the first point of the set, LMU then rattled off the next five. Mustangs finally get another. Give it right back. You've been harping on it, Alex. That's now 15 service errors on the deck. Yes, they will definitely be practicing that this week before they match the Baylor Bears. 15 errors for SMU from the service line, seven for the Lions. Mustangs and Baylor Bears Tuesday in Waco. Big Texas showdown. Have to deal with this California team first. Paige Flickinger on the block. And the bench is going wild. You would think that we are at a concert. They have cheers going on. They definitely are bringing the energy. Here's Lawson. Ace. LMU's fourth. SMU won set one this afternoon, 25 to 12. Had a harder time in set two. Ended up winning 25-20. Since then, it's felt like all the momentum has been on the Loyola Marymount side. Lions took set three and now lead set four, eight to two. I'm Chris Mykoski, former SMU middle blocker Alex Glover is alongside on ACC Network Extra. For SMU and LMU, final match of the Double Tree Classic. Mustangs fighting their way back into this match. Gianna Lawson rams into our broadcast table, unable to get the ball off the floor. SMU, one thing that they practice a lot and hone in on is making a kill off of those happy birthdays. So getting an overpass for them is definitely makes them very happy. Here's Maya Tabron with her team down by five. And again, the deficit is six. And that will be their 16th service area. Yes, you heard that right, 16. Seven, the Loyola Marymount. For purposes of comparison. Here's the Argentine. Leah Burrell, the Canadian. 
Leah Burrell was very dynamic with that overpass. So she knew that Celia Cullen was right in front of her, posing hands up, so she just did a swipe instead of attacking it. Oh, Canada indeed. 10 to 3, LMU. Sophia Myers can't dig it out. Jams Wheeler has seven kills. Jams Wheeler trying to bring a spark back to this SMU team. They're going to need to go on a run here. Ellie Bolton hopes to be the spark. The Mustang Libero. Fed to Caitlin Evans. SMU still just can't get anything going. That was a great crossbody attack by Caitlin Evans. She saw Celia Collin and Maya Tehran bunched up on the left side. Paige Flickinger. Fifth ace of the day for Loyola Marymount. First for Paige. And we will get a sub. Tabron comes out, Lamoran comes in for SMU. First time we've seen her today. Jams Wheeler. Dug out by Flickinger, then to the left side for Myers. We have said Myers' name so much in these last two step sets. It seems like she is unstoppable. 12 kills for Myers. And her team leads 13 to 4. Her hitting percentage now at an even 500. As the Lions looking to send this one to a decisive fifth set at Moody Coliseum in Dallas. Myers, a senior from Seattle, a preseason All-West Coast Conference choice, coming over from Montana State, where she had, excuse me, the University of Montana, where she had 17 double-doubles for the Grizzlies. What's impressed you most about Myers so far, Alex? Honestly, hitting 500 as an outside hitter is not something that you see so often just because they get so many balls, especially out of system. But she's just swinging away tonight and has been extremely, extremely effective for LMU. Paige Flickinger making her trip back to Dallas this week. She attended Byron Nelson High School in Trophy Club, which is a little under 40 miles from where we sit right now. There she was for the Bobcats, the two-time Gatorade Texas Player of the Year, her junior and senior seasons, and recognized as an Under Armour All-American in 2020. She's extremely versatile. She has a lot of tools. We have seen her tip, roll, swipe off a of hand. It seems as if she's always looking for the blocker's hands to play off of to get that immediate point. Played four years for the LSU Tigers. Transferred to Loyola Marymount before this season. Coach Kirsten telling us she is finding joy in the sport again. This is somebody that he's known since she was 13 coming to his camps at TCU. Cullen to Shimei. Knocked over left hand of Myers. Foster. Unsuccessful. And Leah Burrell comes in for the kill. Three for her. Everything seems to be going LMU's way right now. They are finding unconventional kills, even if they are off the tape. This is a 10-point Loyola Marymount advantage. Fourteen to four, Lions. Mustangs get a point back. SMU needs to find a surge. Brooke Frazier trying to light a spark from the line. 
Here's Myers. Point to the ponies. Cohen and Foster were there. That ball was a little low and definitely off of the net. She could not get on top of the ball, so she barely taped and it did not go over. 14 to 6 Lions. Myers met by Lamoran. Now Cullen to Wheeler. Back set to Burrell. Jams. Met by the Lion Wall. It's Burrell and Evans. Burrell and Evans have done a great job kind of committing to that outside and making sure that the block is so well formed and closed that Jams Wheeler had no answer. Back to Sam Hastings. Began her collegiate career at USC. Now her fourth year at Loyola Marymount. Again at the net. Brush the shoulders off of Leah Burrell. This LMU team is very hype right now from the bench to the court players. They're taking away this momentum, which is helping them with this 10-point lead. Ten-point lead for Loyola Marymount. Here's Myers. Back to LMU. Myers meets the challenge, tools the block. I believe Myers just had one block up with Celia Cullen, and she found the outside of those hands. 11 point lead. Cullen to Jams. Off hands, point ponies. And Jams Wheeler will do the right thing, same thing back that Myers just did. She's gonna try to find hands. A couple of plays before she got blocked twice in a row, tried to go high hands, but this time she's gonna use the swipe. Natalie Purdue with her team down by 10. Back set to Burrell. Coming on strong in this fourth set. Burrell is on fire right now, hitting over 600 for her team. She's extremely efficient and someone that they can count on. Mia Schaefer on service. Natalie Foster makes sure that run ends in a hurry. This is great swing by Natalie Foster. Extremely terminal, especially when you're trying to attack the setter. They have a lot of responsibilities that they're thinking about coming up, setting up their offense, but they have to stay back and play defense if Foster's up. When the Mustangs need points in bunches, nothing wrong with having Foster at the line. A gift for LMU as Sam Hastings sent it over and SMU unable to respond. Natalie Foster is an extremely terminal server, so you can expect those overpasses and even aces. SMU definitely needs to be on their toes when she's back there. Saw Sam Erger signaling to her team on the floor. It looked like, talk to each other, let's communicate. Gentry Lamoran making it work. Four kills for her against Weber State yesterday. Now getting on the board against LMU. Eleven kills on the weekend for Lamoran, making her return to the SMU lineup after a long hiatus. Go to her again. Double called on SMU. <laughs> Call.
Calling it there on Wheeler. There seems to be a bit of confusion on whether the first ball was touched by James Wheeler or Ellie Bolton. They're going to go ahead and challenge. Challenging a touch. Now, as far as setters are concerned, doubles no longer part of the college game. But in other aspects, you still have to avoid it. Certainly seemed at first glance to be the right call. But as we talked about yesterday, Alex, I do not predict what the officials are going to do <laughs> when it comes to confirming or overturning because I've been wrong far too many times. <laughs> Maybe I have beginner's luck, but I think you're right on this one. It, well, from this angle, it looks like it could have been Ellie Bolton. Replay, replay. The point will be replayed. As Bolton, you saw that hand come into the picture. That overhead angle may have been what saved it for SMU. Great look. That definitely painted a different picture than the side angle did. The score reverts to 19 to 9. Take that point off the board. Light touch from Flickinger. Shimei was there. Now Lamaran. Lamarand didn't play all of last year. Returned to the lineup this week for the first time since November of 2022. Lamarand is really a test to show you how much SMU really trust their depth. Celia Cullen getting the gift off the nets, rolls over for the SMU points. She puts both arms out after it hits the floor. It's like, here we go. Mustangs within eight. Flickinger off Cullen. Mustangs keep it alive. Wheeler sends it over. Diving. Another chance for Lamarand. Thought she had it off hands. That's not the initial call. Point to the Lions. And we are seeing a big no, no, no from the LMU Lions for no touch. LMU is the first to 20. Okafor denied. Wheeler unable to return it. Right now, it seems as if everything is going right for the LMU Lions, and SMU is breaking down in their communication and even their confidence. 10 point Lion lead. Ninth service error on the day for Loyal to Marymount. SMU has 16 of those. Gentry Lamaran back to serve. Service error 17 for SMU. SMU seems as if they just can't get started right now. Back to a 10 point lead for Loyola Marymount. And a very strong server in Delfina Shu stepping up. Just a freshman, but a ton of international experience playing for her home country. Member of the U19 Argentinian team in 22 and 23. Okafor puts it into the donut. After the last couple of plays, that, that was very smart. Just putting it in the middle of the court between a lot of people to force that communication error and get a kill. Trailing by nine. 
and Natalie Newsom will check in for the first time this season. Her first collegiate playing time, the freshman from Arlington, Texas. Lamoran with a dig, Cullen to Wheeler. On that back line. Let's talk about that substitution, putting in Newsom, just changing things up when things aren't going your way. Sometimes you try to see which player can bring that spark to the court. She's got a fresh set of eyes. The court looks completely different from the sidelines, and hopefully she can add that to the players who have been on the court the whole game. Long. Lions now two points away from sending us to a fifth set. And that will be 18 service errors, doubling LMU. Tenth service error for the Lions. Brooke Frazier returns. The thing Coach Erger loves most about Frazier is her confidence that something LSU needs, excuse me, the SMU needs right now. And how about the freshman? Her first collegiate action, and she comes up her, with that for the Mustangs. Her first career point being such a monstrous solo block. Congratulations to her. That was picture perfect. The player of the year in her district for the Martin Warriors last year. A member of the Texas Super Elite team. Looking elite in her collegiate debut. Set point now for the Lions. Twenty-four to sixteen. Frisco Centennials at Sam Hastings at the line. The freshman Newsom denied. Cullen to the veteran Jams Wheeler. Going to the left side for Myers. Burrell. Another chance for Myers. We're heading to a fifth set on the hilltop. On the overpass, Natalie Foster goes to the far corner. And it is another happy birthday on the tally for SMU, something they practice so much, so evident in their game. She'll have first service for the Mustangs. Three aces for Foster today. Can't make it four. She goes long. SMU has got to clean it up behind the service line if they want to have a chance, especially in this shorter set. Back set to Okafor. Gianna Lawson gets up alongside Flickinger. And you see Lawson throwing up the finger. No, 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 not at me. Lawson and Flickinger are definitely feeding off of each other's energy right now, pounding chests, pushing each other. Long on service. Comparing the numbers again, the service errors, 19 of them for SMU, now 11 for Loyola. Six aces for the Ponies, five for the Lions. Cullen at Hastings. Thought Flickinger had the kill. Mustangs keep it alive. Not so much on that attempt. 
The LMU Lions right now are playing so smart. Paige Flickinger coming up with just that roll shot. She saw the open court and really attacked it. Three to two LMU. Here's Lawson. On the line. Ellie Bolton saying no, saying it's long. We can see the SMU coaches on the bench saying it was in. Coach Erger had the perfect angle right on that back line. Knew not to take the challenge card out this time. Lawson into the net. Mustangs within one. SMU four and one on the season. The only loss coming in the season opener at Hawaii. LMU getting creative on the attack. Olivia Toland putting it down. Six kills for her. SMU is trying to be extremely scrappy right now, but just cannot get it completely together as a team. Back to Delfina Shu. 18 assists for her against Weber State, 18 against Milwaukee, 18 again in this one against the Mustangs. Nice to May denied. Caitlin Evans is there alongside Burrell. Burrell really penetrated that net against Naya Shimei's. She pressed just at the right time. Really an uncoverable ball. All oh, Burrell there. Evans jumping into the picture. But they both get a block assist. Cullen to Jams. Hastings was there. Knocked over by Burrell. Looked like an overpass initially, but Burrell able to get her hand on it. An extremely tight out of system set to Burrell, but she knew. She this is the SMU Double Tree Classic, the final match. Both of these teams perfect on the event so far. 2 and 0. Oh. Weber State and Milwaukee making up the rest in the field. They were disposed of by both the Mustangs and the Lions. Jams Wheeler on the attack. Left hand attack from Burrell. Joust goes to Oka Moore against Evans. Three point difference now in favor of the Lions. That was such a tough douse for Caitlin Evans. Coming over her left shoulder, her visibility was really bad. Here's Ellie Bolton. Back set to Flickinger. Welcome home. An 8-4. LMU lead and they'll change sides. We were told before the game that Paige Flickinger would have a lot of family members here in the stands and she is definitely performing for them. Nine kills for Flickinger. Eight digs. Myers leads this LMU team in both of those categories. 15 kills, 14 digs. Cohen to Wheeler. SMU within three. Another tight set for Jamison Wheeler. There's really not much she could do. She had to use the hands. Swiping inside was so intelligent for her as she saw that the front row player was not in to get that tip. Frazier. Foster.
Hunter and Cullen on the block. 11 blocks on the day for SMU. LMU's just one better at 12. Such a clutch block for Celia Cullen. You can see how explosive she was to get her hands pressed over that net very fast. Two point deficit for the Mustangs. Caitlin Evans still charged up. Something a little unconventional you can see here from SMU is playing their libero in right back versus left back. Here's the libero for LMU, Sam Hastings. Cullen with a long pass to Wheeler. Off of shoe for the Mustang point. These SMU players are really trying to rally themselves in right now. Celia Cullen with the athletic set, giving Jamison Wheeler great visibility. She could take it line or across, and she just went off of top of the outside blocker's hands. Dueling chance in the building, LMU and SMU. Burrell made it work, golf fingers. That was such a high swing. I don't think I saw a touch on the block, but Natalie Perdue out of the back row tried to pursue that ball and it was just too deep. Maybe just skimming that left hand of Foster. Cullen to Tabron and Olivia Toland is there on the block for LMU. That was such a disciplined block from Olivia Toland. She was lined up perfectly with Maya Tabron, not giving her any visibility for that line shot that she wanted to take. All her flexes as she celebrates with her teammates. And back to the bench with an SMU timeout. Flickinger has been fantastic in her return to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She calls Roanoke, Texas home. And today, nine kills on 34 swings, eight digs, and on the verge of leading her team to a victory over SMU at Moody Coliseum. Almost at a triple-double, that is insane. Nine kills, eight digs in her favor. Also has added an ace and an assist, a couple of blocks. As Lola Marymount looks to up its record to four and two. They dropped two out of three on opening week. They went to Western Michigan for the Broncos tournament, lost to the host, then beat ACC foe Clemson in four. Then were swept by Loyola Chicago. Won the first two here in Dallas, beating Weber State in four, Milwaukee in four. And now they have a four point advantage on SMU in the fifth set. Schaefer. Here's Tabron. Met by a couple of blockers. Able to send it over to the left side for Myers. They'll give it right back to her. Myers claiming it went off hands. Challenge card may come out from Coach Kirsten. Right now it's an SMU point, but they'll go to the monitor. Challenging touch. Stands at 11 to 8 right now. But was there a touch here from Cohen or Foster? Again, our cameras are not the only ones that are available to the officials. Other high speed 
Cameras permanently installed here at Moody Coliseum, part of the official replay system. And Alex, I've asked several times, can we just see exactly what they're seeing over there? Right. It's, it's a closed circuit system. <laughs> Can't feed it out to the TV broadcast. From what we are seeing here, cost dance. And it remains with the Mustangs. No touch. Is that where you were going? And that's where I was going. I was just about to say it, but they beat me to it. <laughs> Casey Badenhorst checks in for the first time today. Back at the service line. We saw this a lot last year. Coming in for Celia Cullen when it was her time to serve. Not so much this season as Cullen has put a lot of work into her time at the line. But Badenhorst may be the formula to get some momentum, a bit of a spark for the Mustangs in the fifth set. SMU added Nadie Okamore from Florida. Big addition there and then brought Natalie Foster from Wichita State where she was a problem for a lot of teams in the American Athletic Conference last year. Ellie Bolton making the move from Creighton in the Big East and Maya Tabron previously with Colorado Buffaloes when they were in the Pac-12. And a few freshman additions as well including Natalia Newsom, who we saw for the first time on the floor today out of Arlington Martin. Player of the year in her district. Member of the Texas Super Elite team was Newsom for the Warriors. Yeah. Coming up with her first block of her collegiate career today. And how exciting is that? Natalia Newsom is someone who I have seen thrive in the gym. She's extremely dynamic and explosive. Though being undersized, she is a great middle. And how exciting is that for her? For her first collegiate point to be a monstrous solo block on top of that. Now Batenhorst, primarily a serving sub all of last year. She was just happy to get on the floor and have an impact on a lot of matches. Trying to make an impact here in the fifth set. Lawson denied by Wheeler. Now Tabron off of Lawson's hand. And Mustangs within two. You were just talking about that impact from Casey Baton where she does exactly that, comes in, gives a great out of system ball to Maya Tabron, gives her a lot of visibility on the court and allows her to use those hands from LMU. The junior center from Houston. At Myers. Myers hits it at Shimei. Now Tabron coming on at plenty of runway. Myers dug out by Wheeler. Batenhorst long pass to Tabron going cross court. Out of bounds at the feet of LMU coach Trent Kirsten. That out of system set was a little fast for Tabron. After getting those two high out of system sets, she tried to hit that cross court but couldn't quite get it. Three point lead for LMU in set five. Tabron. Able to tool the block. Mustangs have 10. One huge key for Tabron has been trying out different shots. She'll go high hand, she'll go cross court as we just saw, and also just power through the block. Here's Cullen, the team trailing by two. Flickinger hit it at Cullen and it's to the floor. Lions two point away from knocking off the Mustangs. That is an extremely impressive swing by Flickinger. She saw the high flying Nia Shemay in front of her and went completely around her and decided to go and attack it just on the line. Lawson spinning the ball now up for the serve. Tabron. Flickinger and Evans get LMU to match point with the block. 
everything is going LMU's way right now. Their players are playing extremely disciplined from just the defense to the offense and even behind the service line. Lawson can finish the upset. Cohen to Tabron. Back to Flickinger. Off hands. The Lions win in Dallas in five sets.